This week on Africa Weekly. We travel to Nigeria, where over 30,000 Cameroonians from English-speaking regions have fled regime repression. We meet the Congolese seeking refuge in neighboring Uganda. And we go to Central African Republic, where in a country of thousands of ethnic groups gripped by conflict, dance is proving a unifying force. But first, a summary of the stories that made the headlines this week. Dozens of people were killed on Friday following an attack on the French embassy in the Burkina Faso capital, Ouagadougou. The country's military headquarters was also targeted. Burkina Faso is one of a string of fragile countries on the southern rim of the Sahara that are battling jihadist groups. South Africa's new president, Cyril Ramaphosa, announced a sweeping cabinet reshuffle on Monday with 30 changes to minister and deputy minister positions. Key economic posts have been handed to reformers, including the former finance minister who had been sacked by Jacob Zuma, while several scandal-tainted ministers have been retained to promote unity. These changes are intended to ensure that national government is better equipped to continue implementing the mandate of this administration and specifically the tasks identified in the State of the Nation address. Several of former President Zuma's allies were demoted or sacked. David Mabuza, who has faced allegations of ties to political violence but has never been convicted, was appointed deputy president. Relatives of the victims of last Friday's twin car bombings in Mogadishu retrieved the bodies of their loved ones from the aftermath. The attack, which was claimed by the Al-Shabaab militant group, left at least 38 people dead. Following the group's deadliest ever bombing last October, the Somali government declared a fresh offensive against Al-Shabaab, with U.S. drone strikes increasing in frequency. Four UN peacekeepers were killed on Wednesday when a mine exploded under their vehicle in central Mali in a deliberate attack, capping a bloody week for civilians and security forces in the West African nation. Six Malian soldiers were killed on Tuesday when their vehicle struck a mine and a forest ranger was gunned down in a third incident. Mass strikes gripped the Ghanaian capital as young people erected barricades and blocked traffic. Markets and schools were closed as part of the strike action called by the Guinea General Union of Workers in addition to an ongoing walkout by teachers. Following disputed local elections, the opposition are calling for a complete shutdown of economic activity, putting pressure on President Alpha Conde, whose party won the February 4 vote, to complete promised reforms and speed up negotiations. Experts gathered in Nigeria's capital to discuss ways to stop Africa's Lake Chad from drying up. The lake is the principal source of fresh water for 40 million people, but climate change and water mismanagement have contributed to a 90% decline of its surface over the past 40 years. And as livelihoods are affected, Boko Haram jihadists have been targeting subsistence farmers and fishermen to join their ranks. Fred Assam fled Cameroon for Nigeria five months ago. He left after Anglophone secessionists symbolically declared an independent republic Ambazonia. He now lives here with about 1,000 other refugees in a village a few kilometers from the border. On the very 1st of October, that day, we had a very terrible experience because after the celebration, within uh, say an hour or two, a troop of um, La Republic military actually invaded the community and shot and killed one of us. For several months, protests have been growing and becoming more radical in Cameroon's two Anglophone regions. What started as a strike movement by teachers and lawyers against marginalization by French speakers is now an armed conflict. Separatists are suspected of killing at least 26 members of the security forces. As payback, Cameroonian troops have been sent into Anglophone regions and are alleged to have killed many civilians. More than 33,000 have found refuge in neighboring Nigeria. Some arrive sick, others seriously wounded. A good number of them who are there, bullet wounds, some in the neck, some on the uh, uh, stomach, some on the legs. Oh, there's even one guy there who had a bullet wound that passed through here, passed through the two feet. So 
In fact, many of them have been incapacitated by beating, by bullet wounds and all kinds of things. Cameroon's authorities have called the separatists terrorists and suspect there are rebel training camps in the jungle between the two countries. At the border post, the customs officials are on high alert. We are not afraid because we are capable of handling such situation if it arises. Mm -hmm. We know there are some of them are militants from investigation and closeness to them in studying. We know there are militants among them. So we are very careful and we are capable of handling the situation. For Cameroon's refugees, there's no question of returning without an independent Ambazonia. As repression continues from Yaoundé, many young refugees say they're ready to take up arms to obtain independence for their region. Most of these Congolese refugees are women with their children, who made the 10-hour eastward crossing of Lake Albert. Imani Prisha, a 19-year-old mother of three, arrived a few days ago and hopes her husband will soon reach safety too. She's one of thousands fleeing the latest outbreak of fighting between rival Hema and Lendu communities in their country. When Lendu came to the village, they were dressed up as football players. As they arrived, people went to greet them on the pitch, and then they started shooting and burning our houses. After that, we started to run. Upon arrival, refugees are transferred to a reception center where they received their first hot meal in days, beans and maize. More than 3,000 portions are distributed every day. 61-year-old Marie Aduzi survived the journey, but was separated from her six children and her two sisters. I am by myself. I have no husband. I was with my children, but they were left behind at the other side of the shore. Uganda hosts close to 1.4 million refugees from the region. Most come from South Sudan, but the quarter of a million Congolese are swelling in number. And crossing the lake is becoming even more dangerous. We have still militias on ground and some of the militias are blocking the refugees from crossing the lake. So there's still a lot of people displaced um, in the villages across the lake. Despite the risks, more than 40,000 people have made a crossing in recent weeks, as this year's resurgent violence shows no sign of abetting. The sound of music rings out across the National Museum in Bongi. Twice a week, men and women come together here to showcase the cultures that make up the Central African Republic. The country may have been plagued with ethnic and religious unrest in recent years, but the National Ballet is trying to be as representative as possible. It's an arts organization comprising every ethnic group in the CAR with dancers from the 16 regions. The ballet was founded in 1969 under President Jean Bedel Bocassa and aims to be truly national. But civil war in 2013 and 2014, plus fighting in Bongi, left the country with no institution to push the arts. The National Museum has even been ransacked. This arts organization is facing practical difficulties because of lack of funding and financial support. A lack of resources may make it difficult for the ballet to get the performers together, but the show still goes on in the hope of a better future. The so-called African Mona Lisa, a painting that had been missing for decades, has sold for nearly $2 million at auction after being rediscovered in a North London home. Rassi Erasmus has been confirmed as the new South Africa Springboks rugby coach, taking over from Alastair Kutsia, who was dismissed last month following a run of poor results. Erasmus acknowledged that he faces a huge task reviving the fallen giants. Next week we mark International Women's Day by profiling some of the women breaking ground in male-dominated professions. That's all from us at Africa Weekly. Until next week. Thank you.